Hello and welcome. I'm going to be covering a documentary called The Century of Self that I just watched not too long ago. I want to share it with you and give you the high level overview of this documentary. It is a documentary by Adam Curtis and it is on YouTube. I will leave a link in the description area below if you would like to follow it through. I do recommend watching this. It was probably one of the best documentaries I've seen in a long time. It's very long. You can segment it out, but it is a very in-depth exploration into how we got to where we are today, what happened to mass society in the 1900s that led us into the state of fragmentation of ourselves. This documentary really opened my eyes and it felt like it was almost a bit of the missing link, if you will, of how we have become so disassociated or so fragmented within our deeper self or even completely removed from our deeper self um, in a way that we're that we're acting completely irrational or that we're motivated by our unconscious without understanding the relationship with our unconscious self. So this is going to date back to the early 1900s is where it starts when Sigmund Freud's nephew Edward Bernays moves to the United States and he brings through Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis theories to inspire the public to shop and to consume based on desires. So Sigmund Freud, just as a little note, which was new information for me, I don't truly know too much about Sigmund Freud. I've studied more of Carl Jung's work, not so much Sigmund Freud. So this was actually a very educational documentary for myself. It does touch on some of the points of Sigmund Freud, his life, his research, his, his, um, I would say his passion behind his work and I would have to say he wasn't really fond of humans. He felt that human mass society were irrational beings, very primitive and very uncontrollable. So his work was very much geared towards controlling the irrational self by strengthening the ego, thus suppressing the emotional self or the connection with the deeper self. And this truly is the... I would say the overarching message of this documentary of, of what had happened in our society in the early 1900s and onward that had separated ourself and also turned psychology into a form of manipulation towards the masses. So Edward Bernays moves to the United States from, I believe it was Austria is where Sigmund Freud was originally from. He moves to the United States and starts to work with companies in PR to develop campaigns to create allure and desire for consuming. This drove up sales and drove up consumerism and turned the necessity for buying into the desire for buying. So people turned from basically needing a car to get from one place to another as, an, as a necessity to a desire, maybe buying a car because it was a certain brand or model or it was a certain color. Um, buying certain clothes because it had a sex appeal. And he did actually tie in some of the key touch points of creating allure and desire through these irrational components within people's unconscious selves. So he, Edward Bernays, basically used some of the findings from uh, Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis and incorporated, into, incorporated it into his strategies and campaigns to drive up consumerism in the United States. Then in 1929, the market crashed and there was an overabundance of consumer goods. So there was an imbalance, the market crashed, and then this also led into World War II, where Sigmund Freud ended up eventually passing away just before the war started. He moved to London to escape um, the war in Austria. He found refuge in London and then he later died of, I believe it was lung or, or jaw cancer. He was a smoker. However, I found it very interesting that he did develop cancer in the mouth area, which has to do with communication. And because of his distaste towards humanity, he used his words to suppress the masses and to suppress humanity. So of course, other areas in the world like Germany, for example, and London did use his types of strategies, especially after Edward Bernays was really well known for his strategy. They used the, the strategy of manipulation and manipulating the masses to tame their irrational selves into more of a controllable, uh, controllable 
society. This is where the term propaganda became very popular for manipulating the masses, for basically trying to control society's irrational selves. So Sigmund Freud basically believed that society, humanity could not be trusted because people were too irrational, too, too uncontrollable. But he found ways to suppress the inner self so that the ego self could basically dominate one's consciousness and allow them to fit into the patterns of society and family to be basically more controllable and more subdued or more influenced. And so this eventually was the theme for the entire century, more or less. So after Sigmund Freud passed away, his daughter Anna moved to the United States with Bernays and Anna had a mission of her own. So Edward Bernays went on his own and he was then working with the CIA. He worked with the government. He also worked with other big, large corporations because there was a lot of change between the government and corporations as far as who had a stake in society as far as um, consumerism and control. And so you have to remember that the government's sole purpose or one of the sole purposes was to control the masses and was to influence the masses to inspire them to do certain things. Okay, so that was the main, that's the main theme for the entire documentary. And that's also where the fragmentation within the self starts to appear. So Anna had her own mission, she ended up working with a very affluent family. And by I feel some kind of relationship, she got in with this family who had experienced a divorce, there was a mother with several children, Anna basically worked with this family to show that her psychoanalysis and the work of Freud was valuable and very important for society to work for people to basically not be taken over by their irrational self. And by that, they meant the uncontrollable urges. And by that, they meant by suppression, because uncontrollable urges back then were very, weren't easily identified unless you were m more in the vein of Carl Jung's work. But in the mass society, Carl Jung was on the fringe. In the mass society, if people, society, humanity in this time period did not know and under, did not know and weren't able to understand their emotional self, they would have a very difficult time understanding how to work with it. So the basic premise of Anna's work was to suppress it because they felt that it was too uncontrollable. It was way too, um, it was it was harmful, it was destructive. And again, the control factor was very difficult for a mass society for governments, for example, or even again, for big brands in the corporate industry, which is where Bernays ended up putting his work. But Anna ended up putting her work into the people. So she ended up working with a very affluent family bringing the psychoanalysis uh, work from Freud into this particular family to show that it worked, to show that it could help a family find calm and function and um, relatability with society and with family patterns. Thus, of course, suppressing the irrational self, becoming more rational, uh, more controlled um, and fitting in with, again, society, not feeling, not acting out, becoming very controlled, if you will. As Anna worked with this particular family, because they were highly affluent, her work became very well known. Because also Bernays was working in PR, his work also was becoming very well known and thus became the birth of psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysts all of a sudden started to pop up everywhere. They were working with movie stars, they were working in uh, marketing firms, PR firms, and they became very well sought after. They were very well paid. Edward Bernays had a very, very luxurious lifestyle. Psychoanalysts were sort of the top of the game at this point in time because there was also a big, big shift around people understanding how important this work was to understand the psychology of self. However, a lot of the larger corporations were using it to influence and to manipulate people. Over a little bit of time, the family that Anna was working with ended up falling apart. The children ended up growing up and they became um, addicted to drugs, alcohol, and then one became suicidal. And this information was hidden from the public. Slowly, one by one, cases like this started to pop up with people who were being treated in the same way that Anna had been um, incorporating the psychoanalysis treatment towards this particular family. In time, people were 
were realizing that this treatment was in fact suppressing the human self. But nobody really knew at this time exactly what was happening, just that something was actually going wrong. So you can think of the mass as being manipulated in a way in a certain type of psychology that eventually suppressed their relationship with themselves. They had to show up perfect. They had to dress like everyone else. They had to be like everyone else. Or then eventually in time, they started competing with other people in the, in the realm of consumerism and self-identity when certain pockets of people were starting to try to connect more with themselves of who they are as an individual. This documentary also does cover the progression of individuals trying to return to themselves, trying to understand what's beneath the surface and getting comfortable with their so-called irrational self, which really is the part of ourself that is the shadow and the unconscious self. And once we start to understand it, we can find more peace within ourselves. And it was a bit of a messy process for some years for people to work in this domain and become comfortable with this aspect of themselves, which is still a work in progress today. Again, I do highly recommend watching this documentary. It will open your eyes as far as what has happened to us in society and how major corporations and even governments have used these techniques to manipulate the masses. We are very fragile. We may not feel that way. We may feel strong and tough and have a sense of agency and awareness, but the use of psychology goes very deep. My background also is in marketing, and we used some of these tactics to a degree to market some big brand campaigns. Big brands put millions and millions of dollars into campaigns to make sure that they reach people in emotional ways, creating FOMO, creating an emotional reaction, creating enticement, um, some kind of trigger into the desire of the human psyche. So this is used today. This is used today It's used by the government. Of course, this is not new information. It just requires us to look a bit deeper and to open our eyes and our minds into how information is being relayed to us and how we are reacting as a result. As I mentioned, I highly recommend watching this documentary. It has a five out of five stars for me. It was highly informative. It was inspiring. It was a bit shocking but it opened my eyes and I'm sure it will open yours as well as to what has happened to us and what is still happening to us today. This is not going to go away overnight. This is still being used, these tactics and the psychology of self, understanding humanity and the masses and how to alter and manipulate their perceptions and behaviors. It's still happening today. But again, the more aware that we can be around what we are consuming and how we are reacting as a result, it will change the outcome and it will change our relationship with ourself and what we are doing and the, the choices that we make and our behaviors. So again, I highly recommend this. This will also give a glimpse into how the inner workings work, how they operate. And even just from a very interesting looking back in history, there was some really amazing footage of the past of the early uh, 1900s. Uh, it was really interesting to see the progression even just of society as a whole. So I will leave a link below, check it out. And I look forward to hearing about what you think about the documentary. Wishing you all the best and take care.